Do you have a blast collecting comics, but are just craving something a little more unique to show off? Well, let me introduce you to the wonderful world of original comic book art. It's the absolute next level of collecting comics. So prepare your wallet and let's dive right in. Hello everyone, this is Steve from Cantu Comics, your host and guide to the exciting world of original comic art. Shifting gears from comics to art can be a pretty expensive hobby, which if you have a tight budget can be very scary. But don't worry, it's definitely not as scary as reading 30 days a night. Before we get too far along, I'd like to start off by going over various types of comic art. The most traditional one people think of is a panel page. These are published original pieces of art that vary in use of pencils, ink, and mixed media. They are literally the pages from a comic book. Non-published examples include pinups, unused covers, and test pages that were either commissioned for someone's personal collection or a publisher decided to pass on the particular creative for whatever reasons. There are also color guides, which were created by the colorist to establish a color palette of a page, entire book, or a character. Digital art examples are works that were created on a computer and not traditional media. So we will definitely go over what to expect when you come across those. Then we have the ones that I'm not too fond of, which are literally copies. These are commonly referred to as transparencies, photostats, and Xerox copies. You see these lurking around eBay and you bet I'll give my impression on these bad boys. So starting off with published art, we have pencils. These are the foundation of nearly all comic art. My example here is a penciled panel page by John Boy Myers that I purchased directly from him at his booth at San Diego Comic-Con. Most pencilers like John Boy will build up their layouts using lighter pencil strokes and work up to defined hard graphite lines. Sometimes they will even use a blue pencil in addition to black because the color becomes non-reproducible further down the production process to see if your art is actually pencil and not printed. Look for pressure grooves the pencil made on the Bristol board. That is the easiest way and doesn't require you getting your fingers or art dirty. Next up is pencil with ink over it. I have an example here of a Deadpool panel page penciled and inked by Scott Koblish. After a penciler is finished drawing, it is passed over to an inker or the penciler will go over it themselves with ink. They do this to clean up the art and give it some nice tight and bold lines. It really makes the art pop. They usually ink right over the pencils, but sometimes the penciler made mistakes or disproportionate elements that required the inker to correct. Pencil with ink is a pretty common comic art page that you will come across. Next is a variation of pencil and ink, which is called a blue line scan with ink over it. My example here is of a Black Panther panel page with blue lines by David Yardin and inked by Jay Leston. Blue lines are used primarily when the inker does not have access to the pencil page. This can happen when there's a tight deadline or the penciler and inker live halfway across the world and you just can't ship at FedEx, it's just not an option. The original pencil art is scanned and printed directly on Bristol board in the non-reproducible blue color. The inker then applies inks right over the blue line pages. Typically, when purchasing original artwork, you would receive both the penciled and inked blue line artwork, so be sure to double check as it can impact the value. For a quick tip, how can you spot if your art is a blue line scan or a blue pencil? For one, the blue pencil has a waxy texture. Plus, you can look for pressure grooves if the blue lines are thick and dark. Printed toner lines from a laser will have a sheen to it and are hard and really stuck on the paper. Next is mixed media. These include any and all media type combinations, such as pencils, ink, watercolors, acrylics, charcoal, basically anything that can produce color on paper or canvas. I do not personally own a mixed media comic art piece, but I do have animation cells. I will use my Roroni Kenshin cell with the original painted background as an example. You could tell that this art is original because the brush stroke texture as well as the pigment buildup areas are consistent with paintings. 
If this was a print, it would have a flatter appearance. If you see small dots, pixels, or screened patterns, then you definitely have a print. Moving over to non-published comic art, let's start with pinups. I do not have a traditional pinup, but the closest piece I have to show is this Wolverine piece I picked up at San Diego Comic-Con. I can't remember the artist's name, and my reverse Google image search on his signature was a complete bust. If anyone watching can help identify the artist's name, please make sure to leave me a comment on this video below. So in this particular piece, Wolverine is flexed out in a menacing stance with his claws drawn. This was done in pencils, then Prismacolor markers over it. You could tell that this is an original because the markers bleed over to the back of the paper. The next unpublished example we have is unused covers. I do not have an example in my collection for this, but many times a penciler has a particular layout in mind for cover art. But for whatever reason, the publisher or someone higher up decided to go in a different direction for the cover, so that art was unused. Sometimes these unused covers become pinups, but they're still very desirable pieces to collect. The last example of unpublished comic art is test pages. These are preliminary sketches used to proof various layouts so the penciler can quickly mock up ideas. Again, I do not own an example of a preliminary test page, so I will use my previous animation cell because it included a pencil layout. Some artists go through a lot of test pages before they move forward. Others will just continue to go to town on the same piece of paper. This animation cell was used more as a guide for the painter to know where the breaks in color are for shadows and highlights. Rounding out these next few examples, it starts to get a little questionable. Let's start with color guides. These are printed in a final comic book size print that the colorist colored by hand, which whatever media they are comfortable coloring with. I do not have a personal example, but you can see on my B-roll that the colorists use this page to call out CMYK percentages, notes for any special effects such as halftones or similar callouts. These are really cool pieces for sure, but the part that gets iffy for me is, is this actual original art? At its base, it's just a printed copy. Only original part is the coloring over it. I'm on the fence whether they're considered original art, but to each their own. The next example is digital art. In today's modern era, big name comic artists such as Fiona Staples are embracing a Wacom tablet to create their own original comic art. I personally use a Wacom Intuos Touch 5, so I know the benefit of working straight in Photoshop with that natural feeling between your fingers. For a comic artist, this speeds up their production time as they can literally darken their pencil lines with a couple macro clicks, or just go straight into digital inking from their preliminary sketches. I do not own an example of original digital art, and the main reason I don't is because it falls in the gray area of is it actual original art. When these artists sell their work, what they generally do is print a one-for-one -one fine art monoprint of the final production file. They'll sign it, give their own certificate of authenticity to ensure that it's the only print in existence. Some artists apparently will delete the file after the monoprint is created, but only they truly know if they did it. For that reason, I stay away from purchasing these. To me, it's just a lithographic print, which are a dime a dozen. Okay guys, now we made it to the truly sketchy forms of comic art. Xerox, photostats, and transparency copies are the bane of the comic art world. I do not own any of these, nor would I even want to associate with them. Each of these forms are literally copies of the original, printed on a piece of paper or clear acetate sheet, and then may or may not have even been used in the printing process. There's honestly no way to know for certain if these are real or if some guy took a high-res scan of a heritage auction piece and just printed it on transparency paper. Even if it was used in the original print production or a trade paperback reprint, it's still just a copy of original pencils and ink. I primarily find these photostats and transparencies on eBay, and they all have a similar price of like 30 to 40 bucks, no matter who the artist is or how old the book is. If you want to take collecting and appreciating original comic art seriously, I would just avoid buying these. So I think this is a pretty good stopping point for the first part of getting started with original comic art. What do you guys think about these sketchy prints? Original art or nah? 
Let me know in the comments below what you think because this is a pretty hotly debated subject. Please be sure to tune in every Wednesday when I drop new videos. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when part two of this video drops. This is Steve with Cantu Comics, signing off.